Look, I do think Amber Heard is in trouble, but not because she's going to lose the case. I don't think Amber Heard is going to lose the case. I think what's going to happen, or it's already happened. Amber Heard is fucked. I didn't even know it already started. With three, the requisite intent. See Thorpe, Tharp versus Sanders, 280, 285, Virginia, 476 at 2013. The requisite uh -huh. intent for defamation against a public figure is actual malice. That is, the statement must be made with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. C. Sanders v. Harris, 213, Virginia, 369 at 372, a 1972 case. See also Jackson v. Hart. What exactly is the... Virginia, what are they trying to do now? Is there anyone that knows what's going reckless on right now within the trial? Is aware, quote, is not measured by whether a reasonably prudent person would have published or would have investigated before publishing ellipses. <clears throat> there must be sufficient evidence to permit the conclusion that the defendant, in fact, entertained serious doubts as to the truth of, the, of his publication. Yeah, I, I realize they're quoting Saint case Amon law, but for Thompson, what? 390 U.S. Supreme Court, 727 at 730. Sincero! Thanks to Stephen Sub, really appreciate it two months in a row. shows that Ms. Heard cannot prevail on her claim because she cannot and did not establish that Mr. Waldman made the statements with actual malice. Mr. Waldman testified that he conducted extensive investigation and reasonably, re reasonably believed that this, the three statements he made were true. Ms. Heard presented nothing, nothing to contradict that undisputed fact. Ms. Heard has no evidence ah. of direct Okay, Stone, thanks. Because obviously, Your Honor, we need to talk about direct and vicarious liability, but it, it bears noting that she doing, has bro? no evidence of direct liability and cannot prove actual malice by Mr. Waldman when making the three statements at issue. It is undisputed that Mr. Depp did not make any of the three statements at issue in Ms. Heard's counterclaim. Moreover, uh, in order for Mr. Depp to be liable for the conduct of his, one of his attorneys, there must be some showing that he directed, participated, or otherwise authorized Mr. Waldman to make the statements at issue. There is no such evidence on the record that Mr. Depp directed <sighs> the doctor was or a fucking moron, dude. Mr. Waldman to make the three allegedly defamatory statements at issue in the counterclaims. Indeed, there is no evidence of any communication or coordination between Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman regarding the counterclaim statements or anything else. For this reason as well, Your Honor, Ms. Heard cannot meet her burden of proving that Mr. Waldman was acting within the scope of his employment uh -huh. as our, our agency. What happens if her counterclaim falls Depp. through? Again, it bears noting that there's no evidence that Mr. Depp even saw the statements by Mr. Waldman until he was sued, served with the counterclaims well into this case. It was more than a year after Mr. Depp filed his, his complaint and Ms. Heard lost a series of motions to dismiss that she finally uh, asserted her counterclaims, most of which have already been dismissed by opinion letter of this court. Whereas here, there is no evidence of direct liability Ms. Heard must rely on a theory of vicarious liability to hold Mr. Depp liable for the actions or statements, rather, of his purported agent, Mr. Waldman. Vicarious liability is by definition, quote, liability for the tort of another person, unquote. So to hold Mr. Depp liable for Mr. Waldman's statements, Ms. Heard must establish that Mr. Waldman himself committed all the elements of defamation. I know the court's familiar with this, so I'll try to run through it quickly. C. Parker versus Car Carillon Clinic, 296 Virginia 319 at 332, a 2018 case. Quote, vicarious liability is liability for the tort of another person. It necessarily follows that a claimant cannot make out a case for vicarious liability against an employer without first proving that the employee committed a tort within the scope of his employment. See also Routon Pontiac Corp versus Alston. If they, if they throw Virginia, out the, at page the counterclaim, does that make Johnny Depp's case easier to win or same still? 
And, Your Honor, we cite a string cite citation to cases from other jurisdictions, which we obviously are not binding on the court, but we believe are influential. Since you're no, we, we will be getting to into court, that in a minute. Um, for its review. It is Ms. Hurd's burden to prove by clear and convincing evidence, or, or ultimately, uh, to prove actual malice by Mr. Waldman, not Mr. Depp. And while it is well settled law in Virginia, as Your Honor has pointed out, pointed out last week, yeah, do we have any NA lawyers here? Knowledge can be imputed to a, pr a principal, and this is the Allen Realty Corp versus Holbert case, two twenty seven Virginia four forty one at four forty six. Ms. Hurd's counsel cannot cite any case law stating that a principal's knowledge is imputed to an agent. In other words, Mr. Waldman must have made the statements knowing that they were false or with reckless disregard as to whether they were false. And Mr. Depp's knowledge cannot be imputed to him. There is no evidence hmm. in the record that Mr. Waldman knew the counterfeit Ninja statements I don't think that were counts. false. Indeed, Mr. Waldman did not even know Mr. Depp or Ms. Heard at the time. Uh, she of, of course. Here we go again. Incidents at issue. I mean, all the both the no personal Buckins Kamal strain. Let's do this. And this is reflected in the trial transcript that Mr. Waldman Ace, met doing, Mr. Bro? Depp first in October of 2016, long after the fact. Nor is there any evidence in the record that Mr. Waldman subjectively entertained any serious doubts about the falsity of the counterclaim statements. Quite the opposite. The evidence shows, and it's unrebutted, that Mr. Waldman had very reasonable grounds to believe, and he did believe, and will to his dying day, that Ms. Hurd's claim of abuse were patently false. Mr. Waldman testified at length about 29 witnesses he believed disproved Ms. Hurd's false claims of abuse. Uh, see the transcript at page uh, 6008 through 6012, and I won't run through all of that. But his testimony that two trained police officers, Officer Science and Haddon, were called to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, and saw no signs of injury on Ms. Hurd's face, as well oh, as, quote, Ms. Hurd's own witnesses who have testified in various forms at various times that there were no injuries to her face whatsoever between May 21st and, and May 27th. 2016 when she walked in to court with her publicist her lawyer uh, her former best friend who no longer speaks with her for a no notice <laughs> ex parte tro some of the witnesses whom mr waldman has cited they include laura divineer melanie inglesis who as your honor recalls is was uh, miss Hurd's makeup artist who decided to end any professional or personal association with Ms. Heard. Uh, Samantha McMillan, Hilda Vargas, Isaac Baruch, Trinity Esparza, Cornelius Harrell, Alejandro Dude, this Romero, is, this is spicy and Brandon fuck. Patterson, just to name a few. This is so spicy. It's no so delicious. Jury could find that Mr. Waldman acted with actual malice in making the allegedly defamatory statements. He was not present for the alleged incidents. He has no personal knowledge of any of the alleged incidents. What Mr. Waldman knows is a product of the legal work he did, the sleuthing he did on behalf of Mr. Depp. Ms. Yeah, Hurd cannot Lisa. possibly show that Mr. Waldman with, acted with actual malice and her defamation claim must fail. Two, Mr. Waldman is an independent contractor, not an employee. It is axiomatic, Your Honor, that a person who hires an independent contractor is not liable for the independent contractor's actions. See Sanchez versus Medicorp Health System, 270 Virginia, 299 at 344. An independent contractor is a person who is engaged to produce a specific result, but who is not subject to the control of the employer principal as to the way to bring about that result. C. Atkinson versus Sachno, 261 Virginia, 378 mm -hmm. at 284. That's a 2001 case. An outside lawyer retained by a client in connection with litigation 
is an independent contractor. C. King versus Dalton, 895 F. Sup. 831, Eastern District of Virginia. Dude, if, if all of our witnesses fall through, that's a fucking Ellis, nightmare. A legendary jurist known by all Virginia practitioners held that, quote, a law firm attorney working with a client is nonetheless an independent contractor Ooh, and is How are not you? an employee of the client corporation. In that case, the employer was a corporation, but the same logic applies when it's an individual like Mr. Depp. That was Mr. Waldman's role. Indeed, clients hire lawyers to obtain specific results or to try to obtain specific results but they do not control the means by which the results are, are, in, are accomplished. Lawyers, as Your Honor has reminded us, are subject to professional obligations to exercise independent professional judgment. We, can, we are not at the whim of our clients as much as we want to serve them. See Virginia State Bar Professional Guidelines, Rule 1, colon 2, and 2.1, and just to quote 2.1, in representing a client, a lawyer shall exercise independent professional judgment, unquote. Mr. Waldman is, as a matter of law, an independent contractor, and Mr. Depp cannot be held responsible for any alleged tort by oh. his attorney, particularly uh, for statements about which he was unaware until he was sued for them. Mr. Waldman testified, and it's unrebutted, that he has, an he has his own law firm. He's not an employee of Mr. Depp. Mr. Depp and, or none of his loan out companies have, have issued him a W-2. And Mr. Waldman provides legal services to clients other than in an addition to Mr. Depp. And that's found at the transcript page 6020 through 21. All of that- He looks snazzy as fuck, Mr. doesn't he? Mr. Waldman's statements, the third reason for which we respectfully submit the counterclaim should be stricken, is that Mr. Waldman's statements were protected opinion. And I won't run through all of that, but very briefly, taken in their proper context, the counterclaim statements are non-actionable expressions of opinion entitled to protection under the First Amendment. See <laughs> Kurtz said, what versus the fuck? Robert Welchink, <laughs> 418 U.S. 323 oh, and 339. That's a 1974 case from the United States Supreme Court. See also Shacker B. Buffalt, a Virginia Supreme Court case found at 290 Virginia 83, a, two, a 2015 case. I don't know who could like Amber Heard, bro. All sides of the issue as well as the rationale for the speaker's view were exposed, the assertion of deceit reasonably could be understood only as the speaker's personal conclusion, unquote, and finding in an accusation of deceit to be opinion. In context, Your Honor, any reporter or any reasonable reader would understand and expect a lawyer associated with Mr. Depp, as Mr. Uh, Waldman was, to challenge Ms. Hurd's version of the inherently controversial events of the party's marriage. Yeah, I don't think jo Just Jason would Ms. step Hurd's up. Lawyers were, were quoted challenging Mr. Depp. And Your Honor will remember the context of these quotes that were in a British tabloid where Mr. Waldman's statements were buried well into article in which both points of view uh, were clearly expressed. And Mr. Waldman was clearly identified not as an independent expert on the U.S. Constitution, but as one of, of Mr. Depp's attorneys. Uh, C. Chavez, uh, 230 Virginia 112 at page 119, quote, the most unsophisticated recipient of such a claim, i.e. any reader of the British tabloid, made by a competitor against another could only what do you mean she slipped as up? a relative statement of opinion grounded upon or the how you doing, bro? obvious bias. Not I mean, yet, no. 
They're Mr. basically Wong just nuking Amber Heard's case. This is what's happening here. <laughs> Spice, things are getting uh, spicy, bro. Mr. Depp. Finally, Your Honor, and for the rest, uh, ultimately, Mr. Waldman's statements reflect the existence of two competing narratives. Mary Cross, how you doing, bro? And are merely his subjective view about events that he never claims to have witnessed. And there was no doubt about that. I saw the video of them Turning fucking the celebrating it, actually. Of the argument, which will be more abridged, Ms. Heard is not entitled to anti slap immunity. As a threshold matter, Virginia Code Section 8.01-223.2, which is, as Your Honor well knows, is the Virginia anti slap statute amended most recently in 2019, provides in relevant part, quote, the, uh, the immunity provided by this section shall not apply to any statements made with actual or constructive knowledge that they are false or with reckless disregard for whether they are false. Here, in addition to Mr. Depp's testimony, several witnesses have testified that A, they never witnessed Mr. Depp abuse Ms. Heard, and B, that they observed Ms. Heard without any injuries, marks, bruising, swelling, etc. During um, periods when Ms. Heard claimed it was made for me by accepted. my editor. Such witnesses include, but are not limited to, Isaac Baruch, Kate James, Dr. David Kipper, Nurse Debbie Lloyd, Officer Sines and Haddon, Officer William Gatlin, and former U.S. Marine Starling Jenkins. Ms. Heard's request for anti slap immunity should be stricken, and even if there were disputing even if there were disputed facts as to that now camille is anti -slap immunity fucking hardcore dude because the defamatory implication of misheard statements are not solely relating to a matter of public concern as is required under the statute as has become quite clear your honor mr depp uh, is not suing about any of the pub public uh, policy commentary made by the ACLU when it drafted the op-ed and Ms. Heard put her name to it. What he is suing about here are the three statements that were directed at him. He has no issue with women's rights. He supports women's rights. In fact, he was the one, Your Honor, as Your Honor knows, who made that first $100,000 contribution to the ACLU, and he made it also to the CHL. Your Honor, at this point, I'm going to object. Um, Mr. Chu has largely just read his brief and confined his arguments to those directed in the motion. But like we saw with the last motion to strike, he's now directing his arguments to something other than what's at issue here. And I would object because I think making an argument not to you, but to the cameras, it threatens, it's disrespectful to the court and everyone's time. And it also threatens That's to undermine. Disrespect for my ass, bro. What are you fucking talking about? Being influenced by How's it disrespectful? Well, it, it's his argument. I'll allow him to do Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. As I was trying to say, what Mr. Depp is suing about are the three statements. And it's very clear, despite the pious opening statement that about the First Amendment, that with the testimony of Terrence Doherty and the emails that were admitted as exhibits, that the ACLU and Ms. Heard were conspiring to make it very clear that those three statements were related to Mr. Depp, because otherwise nobody had any interest in the article. And it, it's crystal clear from that. They wanted to time this thing with the release of Aquaman, which was her first film of any significance in terms of uh, popularity. And to do that. And more hours than um, the numbers team. So the but why do they have more hours, though? Do like, do we know why they have more hours? Not why the anti slap protections. Billions, not sure. Yeah, I have played they their billions. It's pretty cool. The rest of the article, not what Mr. Depp is suing about. As generally analyzed by the courts, a matter of public concern is one which relates to, quote, a matter of political, social, or other concern to the community, unquote, as opposed to a matter of only, quote, personal interest, unquote. That's Connick versus Myers, 461 U.S. 138 at page 146. 
Instead, the defamatory implication at issue in each of the three states, uh, statements at bar relate to the personal grievances between Mr. Mr. Depp and Mr. Depp. some of the vibes. Which does not rise to the level of a matter of public concern with broader implications for society beyond it's a good game. the two litigants. It really is a good game. Any more than Mr. Waldman's statements. Fuck. I mean, the... Adding the gloss of public policy might immunize the statements that relate to public policy, but those are not at issue here. Mr. Depp agrees with those statements. We're talking about the three statements that they very intentionally and very cleverly put in to make it clear the implication that it was about. This Mr. is Depp. life. This they is had life. Lawyers from the ACLU working around the clock with Eric George. To make to be as clever about this as possible, and Your Honor remembers the testimony of Mr. Doherty about the consternation at the ACLU when they realized that USA Today and everybody else who read the article knew darn well that this was about Mr. Depp. This cannot be protected by the anti-slap statute. It is a cynical runaround, and I think now that we have the undisputed evidence from from the ACLU in the form of the testimony of Terrence Doherty, who is not only their corporate representative, he was their general counsel. He is a brainiac lawyer. They knew exactly what they were doing, Your Honor. And one of the, he referred to testimony of a woman at the ACLU who said she had nightmares about Ms. Heard, and he expressed no concern about that. Now, that was either because they knew about, she, that was either a reference to this game they were playing with the op-ed or the conspiracy they had system so complex that even saying you lack any evidence to back up your claim has donations. to be dragged out in 20 minutes the donations became I mean, pledges but now they well, talk a lot right she refused to sign the pledge they do right. actually speak a lot so she's caught either way simply stated your honor mr depp is not suing miss heard for making statements about society in general i think that's very clear from the record evidence mr depp is suing her for publicly naming him as an abuser by implication and forever tarnishing his good name, an act that coming from an ex spouse is fundamentally personal in nature. For that reason as well, Your Honor, Virginia's anti slap statute is not applicable. And based on the for foregoing, Your Honor, Mr. Depp respectfully submits that the court should grant plaintiff's motion to strike the counterclaims and also strike her claim that she is immune under the anti-slap statute. Thank you very Thank much, you. Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. As Your Honor knows, I hate her lawyers, dude. Her lawyers are so fucking moronic, bro. Amber, at this point, uh, as well as any reasonable inference a jury might Show me how you doing. from, which would sustain the counterclaim. That's the correct standard here. Um, I'll address the actual malice argument first, the agency argument. Your Honor, there's plenty of evidence in the record from which the jury could determine that Mr. Waldman was Mr. Depp's agent. He made those statements. The statements referred to him as Mr. Depp's attorney. As Your Honor uh, ruled on Friday with respect to the jury instruction uh, conference, an attorney uh, is an agent of his client. Mr. Waldman testified that he's been Mr. Depp's attorney since 2016. Uh, he freely admitted speaking to the press on Mr. Depp's behalf, and he refused to answer question after question about that agency, so we can't use that as a sword now. Uh, Mr. Chu puts a lot of emphasis on the fact that Mr. Depp uh, allegedly didn't see the comments that were made uh, that are the subject of the counterclaim, but as Your Honor well knows, whether he saw them or not is not the standard for agency. Um, there's also evidence that Mr. Depp met with the Daily Mail with Mr. Waldman prior to the defamatory statements being made and released. I believe that was in February of 2020, Fuck. just two months prior. Um, Mr. Waldman also concocted a story that Amber was being investigated for perjury by filing a perjury complaint against her with the LAPD. He disregarded any evidence that he didn't believe would fit in his narrative, that would fit in this story that he was speaking about on behalf of Mr. Depp. And after Mr. Depp lost the UK proceeding after Mr. Depp was ruled to be a wife beater by the court in the United in the UK proceeding, 
The court there found him to be a wife beater. Mr. Waldman then got an overseas tabloid to run a story claiming that objection was most followed by word perjury, which simply wasn't true. <laughs> he walked into the LAPD, filed a complaint for perjury against Ms. Heard, found a media outlet that doesn't follow the two source rule, and then he he had let the world believe that the LAPD was investigating Ms. Heard for perjury. That's a shameful and a sickening example, Your Honor, of the links that Mr. Depp, through his agent, Mr. Waldman, would go to to smear and to defame Amber Heard, and that continued in the three statements in the counterclaim. Your Honor has heard evidence, I won't go through all the evidence, but Your Honor has heard evidence from Ron Schnell, who's traced the negative hashtags toward Amber Heard online associated with those defamatory statements, and notedly noted the staggeringly high number of them that were associated with Mr. Waldman. Under the principles of the agent-principal relationship in Virginia, Your Honor, when Mr. Waldman made those statements, he was standing in the shoes of Mr. Depp. They are one and the same for the purposes of those statements. As Your Honor discussed at length on Friday, Mr. Waldman made these statements with actual malice. There's plenty of evidence from which the jury could infer that. And his own, both from the actual malice from Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman's own reckless disregard of facts that didn't support Mr. Depp and his attempts to manufacture false evidence that did. As Your Honor found in the hearing, uh, I believe it was on March 24th after Your Honor um, denied Mr. Depp's motion for summary judgment, your Honor said, as to malice, a fact finder could reasonably conclude that Mr. Waldman made the statements with malice because Mr. Waldman has no personal knowledge of the party's marriage and still made the Dude, I think she is stressing as fuck. Nothing in this case fuck. has changed that. If anything, General the evidence has only made it more that clear looks too that, good that the jury I'll check it out. and we believe will find. Um, so, Your Honor, there's, there's, no, there's no basis to grant a motion to strike on this agency argument on the actual malice argument. The evidence shows that not only was Mr. Waldman Mr. Depp's agent, but that the two of them conspired to falsely accuse Amber of creating a hoax and falsify evidence that they believed supported their, their theory and what they wanted to achieve. Um, as Your Honor well knows too, I won't go through all the law, but both agency and malice can be inferred through circumstantial evidence. There's plenty of evidence in the record from which the jury could infer those. Moving on, Your Honor, to the independent contractor, the court's already rejected this argument, ruled that an attorney-client um, have a principal-agent relationship, and as Your Honor said on Friday, there's no evidence in this case of anything otherwise. As to the argument that the counterclaim statements are statements of opinion, the court has already found twice that they are not statements of opinion, both on January 4th, 2021, in its uh, opinion letter denying Mr. Depp's demur uh, as to the, the counterclaim statements and the motion resolved. for summary judgment hearing in March of Will the year. judge be the one to resolve as the it, anti -slap though? anti-slap argument, the court I don't again, think so. ruled at the March 24th, 2021 um, opinion that the statements are as a matter of law regarding matters of public opinion. Uh, the court has already ruled that. Therefore, the only remaining issue for anti-slap is whether the intent element of immunity is met. The, as we discussed on Friday, the intent element of immunity is substantially the same as the actual malice standard, which uh, the evidence in this case uh, easily allows a jury to, uh, to to find in favor of Ms. Heard on that. Dude, um, I'm gonna fucking go lose this. The, uh, the litany of evidence that supports uh, that Mr. Depp is an abuser here, but I'll touch on a few things that relate to Mr. Chu's argument. One, Mr. Chu was totally misrepresenting uh, Mr. Doherty's testimony. There's not a single piece of evidence, Your Honor, in this case, suggesting that Ms. Heard and the ACLU were somehow conspiring to uh, achieve a defamatory implication to, to Mr. Depp. That's simply not what Mr. Doherty said. Mr. Chu's feel free to argue that to the jury, but that's not what his testimony reflects. Your Honor, there's also plenty of evidence that's been uh, adduced both in Mr. Depp's claim and in Ms. Heard's counterclaim that show that absolutely there was that the counterclaim statements are 100 percent false there was no hoax perpetrated mr depp is an abuser who abused miss heard she did not conspire with her friends to create a hoax she did not create a hoax herself and just very briefly uh, some of the evidence that's come up since the last motion to strike your honor that mr chu conveniently disregards in his brief are the testimony of rocky pennington 
the testimony of Josh Drew, the testimony of Other than how you Mars, doing? all of whom completely corroborate Ms. Hurd's account of the events of May 21st. I don't know, spacing out, forgetting everything that was said. Melanie Iglesias. Did whenever her lawyers speak, I zone the fuck out. Ms. Hurd, uh, Hurd's bruises with makeup on right after the December 15th incident that provided ample testimony to support that Ms. Hurd often would cover her bruises that were caused by the plaintiff in this case, by Mr. Depp, with makeup. He ignores the evidence of Christy Sexton. He ignores the evidence of Io Tillett Wright. He ignores the evidence of Whitney Enriquez. All of these witnesses and others have testified extensively about Mr. Depp's ex abusive behavior toward Ms. Hurd. Physical abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, verbal abuse, Your Honor. Mr. Depp's own writings, recordings, pictures, and videos confirm that. The list goes on. There's abundant evidence in the record, Your Honor, from which the jury could, and again, we believe will find, that Ms. Hurd is not liable for defamation to Mr. Depp. And therefore, by definition, she, is, she has not acted with actual malice. And based on the court's rulings on March 21st, 24th, 2021, she would be entitled to anti-slap immunity, which would permit, permit her to ask the court to award attorney's fees against Mr. Depp. Um, so with that, Your Honor, I'm happy to answer any questions the court has. That's but fine. That Thank covered. you, sir. Thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Your Honor, I will be br brief in deference to the court's time and the jury's time. What Mr. Rottenborn said about Mr. Waldman's allegedly going to the LAPD about perjury is a complete non sequitur. If they thought that that were somehow improper conduct, they could have included it in their, their counterclaims. They included everything else but the kitchen sink, and most of it was thrown out. There was nothing <laughs> in there about Mr. Waldman going to the LAPD. So that is a, a very clear non sequitur red herring distraction. Number two, when Your Honor ruled on summary judgment on the issue of the counterclaims, Your Honor was dealing with a different standard and a different evidentiary record. At that time, Mr. Waldman had not testified, which is material. Uh, Mr. Waldman has now testified uh, for purposes of trial. We have his trial testimony. It's very clear that he did not act with actual malice. They didn't even argue that. So that's pretty clear. Uh, and again, this is consistent. Something I'm doing is that it's it's all. Uh, about this cases. is lost they spell. The didn't lost sue spell. Mr. Waldman on the three statements. They didn't try to fill the hole. They've been telling us for a week that they're going to call Mr. Depp to try to fill the hole in their counterclaims. They didn't do that. And it's very consistent with the game playing. Let's go into court after the police have found no problem. And after witness after witness who had no relationship with each other said there are no visible marks. Let's not give Mr. Big man, it's not a you doing, brother. 24 hour notice before the TRO. Let's march into court with our publicist, with our lawyer, with our best friend who no longer talks to her. Let's get a TRO. And when the Me Too folks say, why are you taking $7 million from an abuser? They said, I didn't take money from the abuser. I gave it all to charity. Well, they didn't. I, I don't think anybody should feel bad about them stiffing the ACLU, given what the ACLU did in this case, which is a monstrosity. But she did stiff the sick and dying children. It, it is gamesmanship. And, and that's what she's doing here today. But the law is the law. And they have not fulfilled their burden with respect to the counterclaims, there is virtually no nexus between Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman as to these statements at issue, except for the fact that he is an attorney, and that is not sufficient. In a case where they have not even established that Mr. Depp was aware of these statements, and they knew that they couldn't do it, and they didn't even try. And it's more of the gamesmanship. When no, not yet. Ms. Hurd plays word games with Mr. Depp about, oh, I didn't punch you, Johnny. I just hit you. Imagine if the shoe were on the other foot and Mr. Depp, a man, was saying to a woman, oh, woman up. I only hit you. I didn't punch you. And when she, it was chilling when she warned him on the tape 
You go tell a judge, you go tell a jury that you, a man, were abused. See if they're going to believe that. It is an abuse of the system, uh, and she's done it throughout. Finally, Your Honor, and Mr. Rottenborn makes an excellent point, with which I agree, which was that with respect to each of the three statements, Mr. Waldman was clearly identified, even by the tabloid that printed these, well within articles that had both sides represented, that he was Mr. Waldman's attorney. Even the reader of a tabloid understands that when you're getting statements from attorneys, it's going to be forwarding their client's point of view. Mr. Waldman is not the only attorney who has spoken out. Uh, Robbie Kaplan, who was uh, Ms. Hurd's second attorney. So Ms. Hurd started out with Eric George. He made comments to the press. Objection, Your Honor. Again, this is so much further beyond what Your Honor is addressing. I, I'm, finishing up, Your Honor. Okay, I'm, finishing. I'm finishing up, Your Honor. Okay. I'm finishing up. I'm finishing up. My point, Your Honor, and it's Did this guy, what the is fuck? that Mr. George made statements. Her lawyers are useless, bro. Like, position. fucking useless. Ms. Kaplan made very clear statements uh, supporting her client's position on the merits, and so did Mr. Waldman. But everybody knows when reading those that those are statements bipartisan. So for the reasons that we've stated and the reasons set forth in the brief, we respectfully sub, uh, submit that the court should grant the motion to strike or um, in light of the fact that Mr. Depp may reappear, at the very least, take these motions under advisement until the close of all evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. All right, in this matter, I've reviewed all the defendant's evidence as to her counterclaim and I've considered the arguments of her counsel and plaintiff's counsel. Uh, first, to address a few issues that I believe are outside the motion to strike, and that's as to the slap defense. The slap defense is just that it's a defense, so it's really not considered in a motion to strike. Um, having said that, we, I, we went down that legal road on Friday as far as the slap defense goes, as far as the jury instructions. In this particular case, if the plaintiff prevails, it must ah. be with actual malice. Therefore, if it's with actual malice, immunity does not apply under that statute. So um, we will deal with that with jury instructions, and we have. Um, as to independent uh, contractor, uh, again, I think it's outside the motion to strike. However, Mr. Waldman was plaintiff's attorney since 2016. Before the initiation of litigation, there is evidence that Mr. Waldman had a certain role during the prior divorce proceedings in the UK case. Additionally, there is evidence that shows his legal representation was broader than just a limited litigation, uh, as outlined in all the cases presenting uh, an attorney as an independent contractor. So the only evidence in this case to this point is that Mr. Waldman was an agent to Mr. Depp, and that is the basis uh, to weigh the motion to strike. <clears throat> as far as the opinions argument, again, um, I think that is outside the motion to strike. The opinions argument, the court has already ruled on this matter as to the three statements that are issued in the counterclaim, uh, ruled uh, that they were not opinion at the demur and at summary judgment. Um, so that argument um, will not be part of the motion to strike. So when assessing a motion to strike, the court accepts the favorable evidence adduced as true towards the non-moving party. The court cannot reject any inference from the evidence favorable to the non-moving party unless it would defy logic and common sense. When there is any doubt in question, the court should overrule a motion to strike. Uh -huh. Agency may be inferred from the conduct of the parties and from surrounding facts and circumstances. When there is no direct evidence, circumstances may and usually are relied upon to determine whether an agency relationship exists. A principal is liable for the tortious acts of his agent if the agent was performing his principal's business and acting within the scope of his agency. If an agent's tortious act arises <laughs> from their so agency far. relationship is enacted in part to service the principal, the principal can be held liable for the tort. Here the alleged tort is defamation. Besides demonstrating the agency relationship, the defendant must prove Mr. Waldman published an actionable statement, meaning a statement that is both false and defamatory, with the requisite intent. As to agency, Mr. Waldman was plaintiff's attorney at the time of the alleged uh, defamatory statements were made. Mr. Waldman does not deny this, and neither does the plaintiff. Moreover, Mr. Waldman made the allegedly defamatory statements about the defendant during the proceedings of this action and interacted with the defendant once the statements were made while still representing the plaintiff. Taking the surrounding circumstances as a whole, an agency relationship can be inferred, and thus, thus a scintilla of evidence regarding agency must be turned over to the jury. In addition, the jury may infer, infer that Mr. Waldman made these specific statements to a third party mm -hmm. to serve as plaintiff by betray, betraying defendant as an, oppose, an opposing litigant in a negative light. 
It is not disputed that Mr. Waldman published statements and that there is a question, there is a question as to whether statements are false and both parties disagree and have presented conflicting evidence as such. As to actual malice, Mr. Waldman made the counterclaim statements after he met with his client. In addition, there is evidence the plaintiff was with Mr. Waldman welcome, at a thank meeting you so much. in February really 2020 that. with the Daily Mail online. Further, defendant claimed that she met with Mr. Waldman where he threw the paper containing the counterclaim statements within them. Uh, consequently, there is more than a scintilla of evidence that a reasonable juror may infer Mr. Waldman made the counterclaim statements while realizing they were false or with a reckless disregard for their truth. It is not my role to measure the veracity or weight of the evidence. The Fourth Circuit and the Virginia Supreme Court have made it crystal clear that actual malice is a question for the fact finder. So therefore, the plaintiff's motion to strike is denied. Okay? Thank you. Is there any other preliminary matters before the jury? Oh, shit. Okay. So they didn't strike it. Fuck! Would have been nice if they did, right? Would love to see a court case that just uses plain language instead of legal speak. I mean... So, to be fair, I'm right there with you. I did not understand a word of what was just going on. Like, not a word. The judge said a whole bunch of shit. And uh, for the most part, I was just like, what? Uh, it wasn't until the end that I realized, oh, never mind. Uh, we're losing this. What game? Too bored. Scare me for a moment there. No, no, no. We're, like, night four is definitely going to be fucking horrible, dude. They, it's not gonna go well. We have to survive one more night and they keep getting stronger. So, gonna win? No fucking way. I mean, to, to be fair though, to prove defamation is almost fucking impossible, right? So, I wouldn't be too sure of... Um, I wouldn't be too, too sure that this is just gonna instantly be good. Alright, see you later, bro. I mean, would you though? Fuck. So what do we upgrade? Look, I do think Amber Heard is in trouble, but not because she's going to lose the case. I don't think Amber Heard is going to lose the case. I think what's going to happen, or it's already happened. Amber Heard is fucked. Like, in the, in the public eye, she's fucked. No movie executive is going to touch her after this because no one's going to go fucking watch. Right? No one's going to watch a movie that Amber Turd is in. Uh, so her entire public persona is shot to fuck. It's just, it's done. Actors trade on their public persona. If you, if you don't have that sort of thing that draws crowds to a movie, you're not getting cast in a fucking movie. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And Amber Heard... I mean, I don't see her being cast in a movie ever again.